Part 1. We'll hear a man renting an apartment over the phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully, and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, I want to rent an apartment. I saw your advertisement about two-bedroom apartment on Bridge Street. Bridge Street 32, that's it? Exactly. But I have a couple of questions. Yes, I'm listening. Does rent include all the utilities? Such as gas, electricity, phone etc. Yes, sure. You are only responsible to pay the rent. The lease includes cost for such utilities as gas, heat, water, electricity and phone. Great. And what about the internet? Unfortunately, the internet is not connected. But you shouldn't worry about that. If you wish, you can contact the local providers to set up the connection. Okay. And what kind of public transport is near the apartment? It is very close to public transport. Both underground and bus station are about two blocks away. Very good. I think I'll rent this apartment. Very nice. Could you tell me your full name, please? Yes. It's John Hooper. Hooper is spelled with double O. Age double O. Then P, E, R. Thank you, John. I'm Mary Dixon, and I'll be your apartment manager. Thank you. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen, and answer questions 6 to 10. Now, we need to meet to sign a lease agreement. Okay. What documents should I bring? First of all, we require proof of your identity. Then, I can bring my driving license. I'm sorry, but driving licenses are not accepted. Could you bring your passport? Yes, sure. And do you require a tax bill? No, we are not requiring any bills. But you need to present your current employment contract. No problem, I have it. Anything else? Yes, we also need a reference from a friend or colleague, confirming your character. Okay. And what about a reference from an employer? We used to ask tenants for this reference a few years ago. But now we don't need it anymore. As well as your recent pay slips, they are not required. Very good. I think I have all the documents. Is it possible to meet you today? Yes. Is 5.30 p.m. convenient for you? Unfortunately, I'm busy until 6 p.m. Then we can meet at 6.30 p.m. Yes, 6.30 is very good for me. I'll be at your office by that time. I think it's better to meet directly at your future apartment, because we'll anyway make a visit. Oh, you're right. See you soon. Thank you. See you soon. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the information about tickets to one of the royal palaces in London. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you for deciding to visit historic royal palaces of the United Kingdom. Every year dozens of tourists choose to visit the Tower of London, and we have a variety of tickets to suit your own interests. If you wish to make a single visit, you can buy a single day ticket. This ticket enables you to visit only the Tower of London. The adult ticket's cost is £24. Children between the ages of 5 and 15 pay £18, and children under 5 can visit the tower for free. For full-time students, 16 years and over, and disabled visitors we offer a reduced tariff. If you have a reduced tariff, you pay only £19. And if you're going to make a visit with your family, it's a good idea to get a family ticket. The family ticket enables you to visit the tower and one other royal palace during one day. It costs £55, and can be used by up to two adults and three children. For permanent visitors we offer an annual membership. The annual membership provides you unlimited entry to any five royal palaces, and costs £107 for both adults and children over five years. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen, and answer questions 17 to 20. If you can't wait to visit these famous historical places, and have already chosen your ticket type, then it's time to order tickets. The first and the easiest way, is to buy your tickets online. To do this, you should visit our site and select a date, then make a payment. Make sure that after the payment is completed, you receive a confirmation email of your booking. The second way is to book your tickets by telephone. However, you have to pay an additional fee when ordering tickets over the phone. Plus, telephone bookings are not available during the weekends and holidays. So this option is not very convenient. And if you don't want to plan your visit in advance, there is a third option for you. You can simply purchase the tickets in person on the day of your visit. There are plenty of ticket kiosks near the Tower of London and other royal palaces. I hope that you'll enjoy your visit. The end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students discussing their new course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 23. Hi Kate. How did you like the first lecture? Hi Julie. 
You mean that lecture about brand identity? Exactly. When our professor described how brand names are created, as I understood, he'll teach us practical tips and techniques to create better brands. And what about course duration? I heard it's five weeks. No, five weeks is without the final project. The total duration is seven weeks. Oh, I forgot about it. It's the first time I'll be doing a group project. And I'm a bit nervous to work in a five-people team. I think it's going to be okay. He was talking about the right marketing strategy. Did you hear that? Yes, that was the most exciting part of the presentation. The key thing is to grab people's attention. That's true. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen, and answer questions 24 to 30. And how do you like the curriculum? I think it's nice. It's great that we'll be learning marketing in detail, as I've always been interested in this subject. Me too. And after that, we'll be training to design custom logos. The professor told that the curriculum has been modified, and we won't learn design this year. What a pity. The same with product management. But you shouldn't worry, they just combined these two sections into a larger one called branding. Then it's good. Moreover, they've added something called e-commerce this year. It's a great alteration. And the course is kept up to date. Online trading is so popular now. And after that, we'll learn advertising. Yes. And also analytics. Really? Won't analytics be replaced with customer attraction? Yes, you're right. I forgot about that. I think that's all. The professor also teaches a course called Business Strategies. So, we may take his other course next year. Dear, and where is the next lecture? It's in the big classroom on the ground floor. Thanks. You're welcome. Don't forget to take your last week assignment. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a lecture about the Great Wall of China. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully, and answer questions 31 to 35. Perhaps the most recognizable symbol of China and its long and vivid history, the Great Wall of China is one of the most extensive construction projects ever completed. Somewhat ironically though, the one monument that China built to keep foreigners out is actually now the biggest tourist attraction in the country. Despite the initial purpose, the Great Wall never effectively prevented invaders from entering China. It came to function more as a psychological barrier between Chinese civilization and the world, and remains a powerful symbol of the country's enduring strength. Though the beginning of the Great Wall of China can be traced to the 3rd century BC, many of the fortifications included in the wall date from hundreds of years earlier. 
when China was divided into a number of individual kingdoms during the so-called Warring States period. Around 220 BC, Qin, the first emperor of a unified China, ordered that earlier fortifications between states be removed, and a number of existing walls along the northern border be joined into a single system that would extend for more than 10,000 li and protect China against attacks from the north. A li is about one-third of a mile, and that's where the monument's name came from. The original name for the Great Wall is Long Wall of 10,000 Li, or simply the Long Wall. Though the wall is quite inspiring, it was never called the Great Wall in Chinese, and only foreign mistranslation with romantic overtones referred to it as Great or Big Wall. With the death of Qin and the fall of his dynasty, much of the Great Wall fell into disrepair. Much later, a series of frontier tribes seized control in northern China. The most powerful of these was the Northern Wei Dynasty, which repaired and extended the existing wall in 390 AD to defend against attacks from other tribes. Despite its long history, the Great Wall of China as it exists today, was constructed mainly during the mighty Ming Dynasty, from 1368 to 1644. Under the strong hand of the Ming rulers, Chinese culture flourished, and the period saw an immense amount of construction in addition to the Great Wall, including bridges, temples and pagodas. In earlier centuries, the wall held little importance for the Mongols as a military fortification, and mostly served to protect caravans traveling along the profitable trade routes. But during the Ming Dynasty, the Great Wall was considered vital to the defense of the country. Before the use of bricks, the Great Wall was mainly built from stones, wood, and rammed earth. However, during the Ming Dynasty, bricks were heavily used in many areas of the wall. The size and weight of the bricks made them easier to work with than earth and stone, so construction quickened. Additionally, bricks could bear more weight and endure better than earth and wood. But many western sections of the wall are constructed from mud, and thus are more susceptible to erosion. That's why in many locations the Great Wall is in disrepair. A report by the State Administration of Cultural Heritage states that almost fifth of the wall has totally vanished. In places, the height of the wall has been reduced from more than 5 meters to less than 2 meters. And more than 60 kilometers of the wall in Gansu province may disappear in the next 20 years, due to frequent sandstorms. However, the state does its best to preserve and extensively renovate the Chinese wall, which makes a considerable figure upon the terrestrial globe. Due to its imposing sizes, the wall is often believed to be visible from the moon. But it's only a rumor. The width of the Great Wall, viewed from the moon, is about the same as that of a human hair, viewed from two miles away. In other words, to see the wall from the moon would require superhuman eyesight. Today, the monument attracts thousands of national and foreign tourists every day. In 1987, UNESCO designated the Great Wall a World Heritage Site. And now the Great Wall is generally recognized as one of the most impressive architectural feats in history. That is the end of Part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.